Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining. My name is Jade and I'm going to be talking about something really personal today. I'm going to be talking through insecurities and fears. I mean, we all have insecurities, we all have fears, but why does it feel so hard to talk about? Today, I'll be walking through some of my insecurities and fears that I've discovered along the way in this weight loss journey and I'm going to talk about how I've addressed those fears. So, grab a drink, get comfy, let's get straight into the video. Okay, let's do a quick recap of my journey so far. So, I'm roughly around about two months in on my weight loss journey. Around about two months ago, I woke up one day and I was a size 14, creeping into the size 16, and I thought, okay, enough is enough, I need to change, and I need to figure out how to do that. So here I am, I'm just figuring it out one step at a time. If you're like me, welcome. You are in a safe place, we're working it out together. Let's take one step at a time. Okay, first on the list is failing again. Feeling like, okay, I'm gonna go all in on this journey. I'm gonna smash it. I'm gonna do as much as I can, hit it super hard and then go crazy with it. In the past, I've done things like eight week challenges, 12 week challenges. I've gone completely cold turkey in regards to eating and like going into a strict militant style workout. And one thing that I have realized is that actually does not work for me. And it created this sense of fear within me because I was trying to do things so quickly and so immediately that I would crave immediate satisfaction as well. But going with that comes along with the fear of failing again. Because these were short and sweet and very short and sharp sort of methods, they didn't last. So I have developed this fear and insecurity of I'm putting myself through all of this and I'm just gonna fail again. What kind of attitude is that? That's not gonna get you anywhere. Something needs to change, AKA me. I need to change. When you know that something is not working for you, this is the moment to realize, okay, I need to stop and reassess and work out a plan that works for me. For me, jumping into something like that, where it is incredibly strict, militant, X, Y, Z, I needed to develop long-term success, long-term habits, and actual lifestyle changes. Otherwise, I would get to a point where I would get extremely frustrated and I would quit. Or I would just think, why bother? Like, why am I doing this? This time around, I have completely changed the way that I am approaching this health journey, this wellness journey, whatever you wanna call it, and I've seen long-term change and results. Now, I know you're gonna say long-term change, but hasn't it only been two months, Jade? Well, yeah, you're right. But at the same time, this is probably the longest and most consistent that I've ever kept to a workout schedule. And not only just the workout schedule, but also my eating habits, sleeping habits, uh, my general every single day routine of going to work. Did you just see that mosquito fly by? Where did it go? Every single time that I've fallen, I've learned something from the experience and I use it to motivate me. And what was my lesson? It's so important to remember, it's about progress and not perfection. Okay, so let's talk about the next component. My next one is slow progress. This is one of the most frustrating points is being patient. It can be so frustrating. It's like watching paint dry. But here's the thing, slow progress is still progress. Every single step that you take, no matter how big or small, this is something that is so worth celebrating. Slow progress is so important because this proves that you're not only just changing your body, but you're also changing your lifestyle, your habits, your routines, everything. I mean, let's clap for that. And just remember that you are aiming for long-term success like what we just talked about. For me, what I have learned is it's taken me roughly around about eight weeks to develop these habits, these routines, this new lifestyle that I'm slowly adapting to. But that in itself has proven to me that these changes do take time and you have to be patient with yourself. Learning to be patient with yourself is key. This is why it is so important to keep your main motivators of this journey in mind along the way. This is what's kept me going and not quitting when things have gotten too tough. 
One of my biggest tips is to take as many videos, progress pictures as you can. Take them from all different angles. What I have done is I've taken them from the front, from the side, from the back, and both sides as well. Um, can't hurt. One thing that I have done is created a photo album in my phone where I save all of my progress pictures, all of my videos. I just chuck them all in there. And so it's easy for me to reference. It's easy for me to just go into that album and have a squiz at all of the change that I've made. As you're going along in your journey, you think that you're not really making steps. And so I have found it has been one of the key components to keeping track. It's given me so much confirmation when I look at these pictures because it reminds me of where I started from and how much things have changed, even though it feels like at a snail pace. <laughs> My next insecurity is gym fear and the fear of looking silly. And what's funny about this is this is such a common fear and insecurity. I have totally been there and I can totally relate. This is something that would genuinely freak me out and it would actually stop me from going to the gym. When I was at a mixed gender gym and I will, I'll leave their name out, but I would feel so intimidated and so self-conscious that I never ever went by myself. Dylan always had to come with me because I felt so self-conscious. I would be trying to work out and I would be so worried that people were whispering about me, saying I looked stupid, my form looked silly, I was only lifting two kilos, or even more recently, judging me being heavier. After some time, something that I have learned is that a majority of the time, people don't care. And it's literally just as simple as that. They are too focused on their immediate working out space and their own routines that most of the time they're not even looking. Also, not even being judgmental or mean, but what I've actually noticed is that a lot of people who are working out, especially when they're doing weights, they're actually trying to look at themselves in the mirror to see how their posture is and if they're doing their workout correctly. I mean, if they are judging me and they are saying those things, I feel like that is a total reflection on them, not on me. I mean, that doesn't define your worth, your effort, and investing time in yourself. But all jokes aside, I know that this is such a hard insecurity and one that took me a really long time to get over. But I'm here to tell you, once you do push past it, it's amazing, it is so freeing, and you honestly don't care. It's important to embrace your journey and not care about what anyone thinks. So I have a couple of tips that I've used to, I guess, deal or cope with this insecurity. My tip would be to start small. Maybe you going to the gym and doing something that you're confident in. Go on the treadmill, walk on the Stairmaster. Or if you do have a little bit more experience, maybe you could try the weight machines that you're comfortable with. It's all about building your confidence levels up. One thing that I do when I go to a new gym or a new workout space is I'll actually see what classes are on. When you go to a class, technically you just need to show up. You just grab a spot and you just follow the instructor and it's usually for half an hour or an hour. Usually in the gym classes, there is such a mixture of people and different levels of exercise experience. So this could really help with your confidence levels or just feeling comfortable. This next tip I used all the time. Whenever I joined somewhere new, I would always look at the busy times and try and work my schedule around that. Maybe it would help you by going at a quieter time to familiarize yourself with the space, the machines, the layout of the gym. Also, it may not hurt while you are feeling a little bit self-conscious to have less eyes on you where you can be in the moment and focus on what you're doing. After a couple times, you'll care less and less about the other people that are in the gym training nearby or even across the room for you and you will just worry about yourself. But do not be harsh on yourself. This insecurity is so, so common. Nearly every woman that I speak to has experienced this to some level or degree. All right. So the next one is the effortless gym girly. Now, I feel like we've all seen this and on social media, we always see the beautiful girls that are referred to as gym girlies. They usually have these beautiful slicked back hairstyles. They have the colored matching sets and they have these slender perfect bodies that look like they don't even sweat when they work out. I am here to keep it real. I do not look like that when I work out. I look like a red tomato gasping for air like a wildebeest. I'm nearly suffocating because I don't want anyone else to hear how heavily I'm breathing through my exercise. My hair is usually in a bird's nest. 
I have sweat rings and the fans need to be turned up a notch. But let's debunk that myth because there is no effortless gym girlies. We all know that social media, we want to post the positive and never really the negative. So by default, a lot of people are not going to be posting their unflattering and vulnerable selves for all of the internet to see. Naturally, I think that everybody just kind of wants to look good. Also, I think it is really, really important, all jokes aside, let's get serious. I think it's really important that we should actually highlight that the girlies and the guys that do look like that, they have probably put so much time, money, they've really invested in their lifestyle, the way that they look and all of that. I'm sure that they work so hard for their bodies and that shouldn't be taken away from them. I mean, I know how hard I'm working and I don't look like an effortless gym girly. Remember that Everyone starts somewhere. Remember to embrace your journey. You are the only one that's on it. This is important because you shouldn't be comparing as that can be so difficult and it can play tricks on your mind. Overall, comparison is never good. So I just feel like try your best not to compare yourself, but maybe use it as motivation if you can and in a healthy way. Remember to embrace your uniqueness and focus on yourself. So the next one you've heard me talk about before, I touched on it in my last video, but it is rest guilt. Taking a break is not failure, it's actually an essential part of your journey. Your body needs to rest, recover, recharge, so it can come back even stronger. So banish that guilt because it is necessary and it is self-care, you're doing this for long-term success. Like I said, I touched on this in my last video. It was something that I really struggled with because I had the motivation then. I wanted to do something with that energy then and there. And I just remember in the early days, I would feel so bad because I used to view it as doing nothing. Stop right there, that is not helpful at all. It is totally okay to take some time off if you need it and then just return when you're ready. So one of my biggest tips is let's set you up for success. Why don't you take a second, look at your week ahead and plan your days out accordingly. This could be looking at the gym classes for the week and seeing which ones spark your interest. This could be following along with a PT program and usually they have rest days scheduled in. If not, when you are looking at scheduling your own week, just make sure that you take a couple days here, there, in between your big workouts, as this will help you mentally because you're planning for rest. So you know that maybe today is my rest day, but tomorrow or the next day, I know that I'm gonna be back into the swing of things. One of the biggest things that helped me, and I did talk about it, was that I knew that every day I had a class that I was going to in Reforma Pilates, that all I had to do was literally show up, attend, smash it, and then I could go home. This helped me so much in relieving any of the guilt that I had. I knew that I had a place to be at a certain time, but then I knew for the rest of the evening, I could do whatever I wanted and my week was just planned out for me. So before we finish the video today, I wanted to talk about something uh, which was a strategy that my therapist actually told me. She told me that because I can be hypercritical of myself and really, really harsh on myself, that I needed to change my perspective. So in doing this, we talked through scenarios where some of the issues I was having, what if a friend or a best friend came to me that shared those exact same insecurities, fears, or things they were struggling with? So for example, if one of my best friends, let's say my best friend Corinne, if she came to me and discussed any of the insecurities that we've talked about in this video today, how would I speak to her? What would my tone be? What would I come out with? First things first, I know that I would be listening, I would be validating, and I would be patient. I would give her the space to get out everything that she was feeling. I would 100% validate her fears, her insecurities, whatever she was struggling with. And I'm sure that we would discuss ways on how to get through that. But it's so funny having a strategy like that described to you because you instantly can see 
Maybe you don't treat yourself the kindest either, and that is maybe something to work on. In either my first or my second video, I talked about how important it was to speak nicely to yourself. I wanted to be my own best friend and treat myself with grace, kindness, love, all of that stuff. So if I could do that for people in my life, like friends or family, why was it so hard to do that for myself? So that's exactly how I came up with today's video. I sat down with my laptop and I wrote out all of the things that I felt insecure about, not all, but like some. With that list, I talked through what I would possibly say to my best friend. Maybe doing the same could really help you too. Either way, I really hope that you've learned something in this video. In conclusion, my weight loss journey so far has been such a varying mosaic of ups and downs, triumphs, victories. I just want you guys to remember it's okay to be vulnerable and it's more than okay to take your time. What matters is your perseverance and your dedication to yourself. Remember that you are doing this for you and you are showing up for yourself. One day turns into one week, then it's a month, and then it's a couple months later. As long as you're trying, that's what really counts. Time will continue and you'll be well on your way. Now guys, I really wanna hear from you. Tell me some of the tips and tricks that you've learned along the way if you're on a similar journey to me about how you've coped with these, how you've addressed them, how you've smashed them. Leave me a comment below. Remember, as per always, we can totally do this and I believe in you. Once again, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported me, whether it's online or in person. I've had so many people reach out to me and I cannot thank you enough. Remember that you're incredible and you've got this. You can totally do it. I'll see you on the next video. Make sure you take care of yourself. Bye guys.